بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد الحمد لله والحمد لله رب العالمين so today i want to talk about determining the qibla after the global meltdown and you're in the wilderness and you might be thinking the compass will be enough but the fact is it's not going to be enough definitely not enough to get to mecca to find the mahdi and there are many many issues with the compass which i'll be talking about shortly I first want to start off by talking about how to determine the Qibla, the proper traditional way uh, of determining the Qibla. Now this will surprise many people because this also answers a lot of questions regarding a lot of issues. And uh, it's un uh, so let's now start with uh, this point. That is that there are two dates in a year, okay, in which that help us determine the Qibla. They have for centuries. These are the two dates that about noontime around these dates, wherever the shadow is facing, the opposite of that is the direction of the Qibla, as I will be showing to you. Or if you draw a line from the shadow, and these are two dates in which the sun is directly over the Kaaba, and the Kaaba loses its shadow because it's directly over it. At that moment where the the sun is directly over the Kaaba. There is no shadow over the Kaaba. That happens twice a year. Now, so set the Qibla direction with the help of the sun today. Now, which are, which are those dates? I'm going to come to that in a second. But I'm just showing you that this has been traditionally set Qibla direction with the help of the sun on May 27th. So when you find yourself around May 27th at noontime, when you put a stick into the ground, wherever direction that, that shadow is taking you, that is the direction going to be the general direction of the Qibla. Okay? Now, uh, watch the sun today to find the Qibla. Same point. Uh, I would, uh, here's how to find the direction of the Qibla on May 27th. So May 27th is one of the two dates in which the sun is directly, as you can see in this picture, is directly over the Kaaba. And then wherever you are in the globe, with the exception on the extremes, uh, wherever you are in the globe mostly, you'll be able to determine from there where is the Qibla. This is the proper way to do it and the traditional way of doing it. Now, let me read this to you. Qibla from the sun. It is not advisable to determine the Qibla using a compass, especially for orienting masajids. So you're in the wilderness, you have a community, you have a jama'ah, you want to build a masjid. Well, the proper way to do it for centuries has been to wait for these two dates that I'm going to give to you. And everyone should know these two dates. Okay? And everyone should know in their local time, wherever they plan to do hijrah, right? They should know which way is the Qibla. Okay, so now it is not advisable to determine the Qibla using a compass, especially for orienting the masajid. The following method, which uses the sun, is more reliable. It has been observed for centuries and reported in many books by Muslims around the world that two times a year the sun comes over, overhead above the Kaaba. And what they said in the past can be verified now, has been verified now. In fact, I'll show you a clip uh, where a lady is doing this exact thing on TV. This is observ observational fact for centuries. It is the mo it is used to set the Qibla direction in places as far from Mecca as Muslims for the last so many last uh, for for last many centuries. The two dates and timings are May twenty eighth and July fifteenth. Now I have to make something clear. When you are in a lunar lunar calendar, you can only have an approximate and not a definite date necessarily. Right? So what you need to do is around that week, the sun at noontime is still in generally the correct direction. When we're talking about these dates, we're talking about what? We're talking about right on top of the Kaaba at that exact time. Okay? When you observe the sun at these times, meaning if you did it a day before or you did it a day after, okay, you would generally get the right uh, direction. Okay? When you observe the sun at these times, after converting it to your local time, you will be facing the Kaaba, giving the Qibla direction. Because if you were 
uh, if you were to, like, for example, draw a minaret okay, over the Kaaba, reaching up the sky, then you will see it just like you're seeing the sun. Okay. Now, let us take a few examples. If you are in Islamabad, Pakistan, the local time to observe the sun would be 218 on May 28th and 227 on July 15th, the two dates. Okay. Similarly, if you are in uh, Canada, uh, the local time to observe the sun would be 618 a.m. on May 28th and 627 on uh, a.m. on July 15th. If you are at a location where you cannot see the sun on the, on the above mentioned two dates, then you can locate the Qibla from the sun when it comes overhead at a point diametric opposite of Mecca on the globe and look for the following two dates and times, which would be then in that case you would look at November 28th and January 13th. Face toward the shadow of the sun. And I'm going to show this and demonstrate this to you in a second. Face towards, face toward the shadow from the sun at these times. After converting it to local time, and you will be facing the Kaaba. If you see the sun but cannot see the shadow, put your back towards the sun and your face will be towards the Qibla. People tend to use compasses for determining the Qibla, but they do not realize the errors involved in compass. Firstly, the compass is affected by metallic objects in the vicinity, in furniture, in building materials, even buried in the ground. So the compass placed at different, uh, at different locations in the same room gives different directions. Secondly, the angle of the Qibla can only be determined or calculated from the true north, and the true north cannot be determined by a compass. The compass points to the magnetic north, based on the Earth's magnetic field, which is changing continuously and sometimes has erratic behavior. That may be uh, that may be many degrees away from the true north. Now, let me demonstrate this to you, inshallah, uh, using this uh, video. Well, okay, so I already showed you this. Uh, let me now show you. So this is a video. So the lady here... Uh, I'm not translating, but she, you can see the word. She's saying the word Kaaba, and she, you know, she's. So I just want you to look at that stick in the shadow. Okay. I'm hoping that I can show you a picture. There you go. Okay, so let's just stop this. So you put this there and you wait for these dates. Okay. And then at the time the Kaaba is the 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 sun is at is 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 right at that time where the sun is right over the Kaaba. Okay, that will give you the direct uh the direct direction exactly towards the Kaaba when there's no shadow over the Kaaba. If you're but obviously if you're in Hijra, right, you you don't have somebody sitting in Mecca giving you a call. Okay, now is the time. So what you do is that during those dates, around these dates, you get uh, an approximate. So, but you, how do you get an approximate? You get an approximate by knowing when is when is the uh, the the timing, which is nine eighteen on November twenty eighth and nine twenty seven. Uh, on January 15th, okay? So wherever you are, if you know beforehand what is 918 universal time on May 28th and what is uh, and January 15th, 927 universal time, then what? Then you'll be able to determine by putting a stick and waiting for this particular time on this particular date where the sun has no shadow over the Kaaba you'll be able to determine the place of the Kaaba for yourself and for the masjids that you will build at that time when there is a complete meltdown of the economic system and you've done your hijrah, okay, and you've done your hijrah and you need to build your masajids. And you need to build these masajids and so they should not be, they will not be 
and you may or may not have a compass. And even if you have a compass, you might be able to determine because the Sharia allows what allows the Qibla not to be exact. Okay, so you might build a masjid based upon the uh, direction of the compass and the east or wherever you're going to face towards the Kaaba based upon the compass. But then you have to reorient yourself specifically according to these times because these are the times that will give you the exact direction. When you're moving towards the Mahdi, same thing. When the Prophet said, crawl towards the Mahdi, well, we know the Mahdi will be in Mecca. So you have to go towards Mecca. How are you going to go towards Mecca? Well, you're going to go towards Mecca by knowing, generally, you will want to know the direction of, you'll want to move in the direction of the Kaaba. And uh, there are other ways to determine going to the Mahdi, obviously. But uh, if you are out really in the wilderness, let's say you traveled all the way up to Saudi Arabia, and now you're in the middle of the desert and you don't know where to go, well, it's good to know these tools that will help you at that time. The other thing that I wanted to show, inshallah, is to, for you to get a better idea of uh, how this works, is that you can also hear Qibla observation by shadow. Twice a year, the sun accumulates at the zenith of the Kaaba in Mecca, the holiest site in Islam, at the local, at local, solar noon okay allowing the qibla the direction towards the kaaba to be asserted in different parts of the world by observing the shadows cast by vertical objects okay uh and so uh now let me show you this picture okay uh by the way this also answers uh, the question of the uh flat earth the whole qibla question but uh i'm not going there right now but you can determine when the Kaaba is, the sun is directly over the Kaaba and there's no shadow. And wherever you are in the earth at that time and you see the sun, right? You could determine, okay, now you can determine, see, see the stick here? So you see the stick. Uh, now the shadow of the, of the shadow, if you draw a line from the shadow towards the sun, that is going to give you the direction of the Qibla. Okay, so twice a year the sun passes over and above the Kaaba, causing shadows of vertical objects to indicate the direction of the Qibla. So this is one of the ways the direction of the Qibla is determined when you are in the wilderness. Again, so that people are in complete understanding, if there are two, two, two of these, May 28th at 9.18 Universal Time, July 15th at 9.27 Universal Time, okay? Now, I know that uh, putting like a timestamp instead of using natural phenomenon comes with its problems and its issues, but in this case, uh, it's just a method, you can say, to determine where the Qibla is. And also, again, November 28th at 2109 Universal Time, January 13th, 21. Uh, 29 universal time okay that is if you're at a location you cannot see the sun on the above mentioned two dates okay uh, then you can look at the Qibla from the sun when it comes overhead at a point diametrically opposite of Mecca on the globe okay so if you are at a location you cannot see the sun okay then this is the way to do it um, on November 28th and January 13th in 2109 and 2129 uh, universal time okay so this is the traditional way to see what the direction of the Qibla is and uh, you know so I just wanted to point this out because it will be important to know uh, when you're leading a community and uh, you're in a jama and the people will not know uh, what are the traditional ways of doing things and people will make uh, uh, you know their best guess based upon if some of them have a compass or not you should have a compass but you need to recheck that compass using this particular method to be exactly sure now once you've determined the direction of the qibla so you know the true north uh using the compass you can say or just you can, even using the stars you will know the way of the north but the qibla has to be determined in this way this is the best way to determine the qibla so over here, before I end, I want to mention uh, two points. Number one, 
that uh, this nizam, this system that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created, uh, how uh, wonderful it is that uh, no matter if you, if you attain the knowledge, then no matter where you are in the world, you can determine the qibla properly. <clears throat> now, I also want to mention that there is a lot of tolerance in general regarding the direction. Okay, for example, uh, the Prophet sallallahu he said, okay, uh, and I'll just, uh, this translation, I don't really like it that one. مَا بَيْنَ الْمَشْرَقِ وَالْمَغْرِبِ قِبْلَةٌ the space that is between the east and the west is the Qibla. What is he referring to, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? He's specifically talking about in Medina. Okay. Because Medina is in a place where if you're facing, you know, it's it's kind of like right at the center, meaning right near the Kaaba, right? If you face uh, in generally in the right direction, if you look, right? So it's like nor of the east nor of the west, meaning from Medina. But even though there is, if you go into exact detail, of course, the Mecca is a little bit more to uh, one side than the other side. But the Prophet said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, whatever is between them is okay. And we also know some of the Fuqaha, they say that for, of course, the Fara'id, the five-time prayers, you have to be facing the Tibla. But some of them allow that, for example, if you're traveling or you're doing your Nawafil, then you can pray uh, even in any direction, and that becomes the difference between the verses of the Quran that say, The east and the west all belong to Allah, and wherever you face, you'll find Allah. So, this can work in the case you don't know, or in the case that, uh, what? Uh, that, uh, you, like you're doing your nawafil. Okay? But again, this is an ikhtilafi issue, so I don't want to go too much into it. Imam Shafi says, in order to try to figure out the struggle to figure out the Qibla like if you're in the middle of the desert you walk one mile in each direction to find you know if you can find any human being or another masjid or whatever you have to walk one mile north one mile south one mile east one mile west and only then you can you know uh, <clears throat> anyway this is a, a secondary issue the other issue is that you should practice this uh, on these particular dates uh, in with your masjid you should also practice this at your house so that when you out, are out in the wilderness and then you have the experience to be able to help the Muslims at that time out uh, please do share this video of mine because it will and could become extremely important for determining the Qibla when after the meltdown happens Jazakumullah khairan Okay, so I will just leave it uh, for this, inshallah, for now. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.